Imagine owning the largest Roblox game, ranking millions of dollars and billions of visits, only to lose it all. Sadly, this happens to many, many beloved games, and for reasons you might not expect. So, to find out why this happens, and how to prevent it, we need to dive into the stories of fallen Roblox games. Beginning with Meep City? Wow, that looks different. What started as a passion project by the player Alex Neutron, quickly became a rising Roblox game. But wait a minute, you may be wondering how a game this plain huh? blew up in 2016, a time when games like this were on the rise. Alright, alright, let's throw our preconceived notions out the window and actually analyze the game. Despite having a basic design, the game had infinite things to do. You can chat, work combo jobs, and start a family. With zero rules, players were fully in control, which hopefully won't backfire. But even with all this, Alex wanted to give players something to grind for. Money. So he added mini games to keep players playing, like puzzles, races, fishing, you name it. Overall, the game was a nice way to have a break from your troubles. Look how amazing that looks, oh my goodness. <laughs> Meep City is officially a year old. Most of Alex's games would die by then. But Meep City's endless gameplay made it stand out. But to prevent players from losing interest, the devs added one important feature, parties. This allowed you to invite your friends to your house and have a fun time with them. A totally innocent feature that definitely won't be- Bro! What are you yapping about? Yeah, it's probably nothing. After two years of consistent updates, Alex broke the limit of how big a Roblox game can get. The updates themselves weren't the craziest, but the main thing carrying the game was parties. Since players can host their own games, Meep City became more player-driven and infinite, which made it the first game to reach a billion visits. And of course, his fans were proud. The online dater overlord. Wait, what? Are you sure? Incredible? LOL promoting online datas. Humanity Shame. is doomed. Ban Meep City! Oh my god, no please! What the f- Are we looking at the same thing here? Time for an investigation. Surely a game this innocent couldn't possibly get this much hate. Anomaly detected. But aren't parties the reason why the game is so popular? What the hell? Why did I open that? Yes, parties were crucial for the game's success, but at the same time, made the game very unsafe for children, cause the parties had questionable items that enabled this kind of behavior. I mean, what do you expect when a game has zero rules and is completely controlled by players? Despite this red flag, Alex continued to grow his game with the issues in the back of his mind, but at what cost? As the numbers rose, so did the dangers. I really hope something is done about this, otherwise who knows what'll happen. Due to the insane backlash, exploiters had a motivation to attack the game, which made it more unsafe for children. At this point, Alex had two options. He can either remove parties to save his reputation, or maximize his growth by harming more children. Although he can't control what players do, his ignorance of the game's rules and features certainly played a part, leading to one final blow. With his biggest game that he spent years on dead, Alex was confined to one last option. Although it wasn't ideal for performance, it was the right thing to do. 
Surprisingly, Alex got his game back, but with some consequences. Without parties, the game was 90% less popular, but I guess it was worth it for the safety of players. But even with this change, the game still has these kinds of people. I guess the damage was already done. Now that was a pretty big game, but what about a game 10 times its size that also went up in smoke? How is that even possible? To truly understand how, we need to find what makes old games never die. But to do this, we need some help from our sponsor, War Thunder which also never died out. It's a free-to-play epic military action game with ground, air, and naval combat, ranging from the 20th century all the way to now. With a large-scale multiplayer map, players can play and fight however they want, which kinda reminds me of our first Immortal game. Although not as intense as War Thunder, it's a large-scale multiplayer game with many different jobs as pizza makers. With so much to do and many different ways to make pizzas, players can play however they want, while being appropriate. And even 11 years later, the devs still make efforts to update War Thunder, like the new air superiority update, containing better vehicles like the T-90M, Gripen, and F-15 Eagle. And not to mention, a new location for air battles which makes the game all the more chaotic, just like NDS. The game forces you to survive random disasters in random maps. As simple as this seems, it makes so much room for random chaos. Even to this day, funny memes are still being made about it. With various locations and a huge player base, you're constantly on edge in battle. You'll never know when you'll get blasted by a guided missile, drone, or a nuclear bomb. Similar to our last Immortal game. In Murder Mystery 2, one person gets chosen as the murderer, but has to hide it. You never know who the murderer is or when they'll strike. It's a game of bluffery and you're always on edge, which makes it more exciting the more you play it. And just like Roblox, it's free on all devices. So download War Thunder right now with the link below. And if you're new or haven't played for at least 6 months, not only will you get free vehicles for a week, free skins with them, 100k silver lines, free premium vehicles, and a week of premium. But I'll also give someone 10,000 Robux. You don't want to miss it. Anyways, with all this in mind, it's time to move on to Phase 3. Wow, three times did this massive game get abandoned. Three times, even Meep City still updates. Our story begins when 17-year-old Preston had a goal. A goal to make as much money as possible from Roblox games. So he spent months on a new game, Pet Sim. The aim was to collect money with your pets and use that money to get even better pets and zones to earn more money. The game immediately took off thanks to how colorful and grindy it was. Players spent thousands of dollars and hundreds of days grinding for the best pets. Oh man, that's a lot, wow. But as time went by, Preston got tired of making the same updates over and over again. So to fix this, I'm gonna kill my game to make a sequel. You're joking, right? Surely it has to do good. You may be wondering how a sequel to a massive Roblox game failed. I mean, the game is also colorful and grindy, so how could this even happen? Well, compared to the previous game, Pet Sim 2 barely had any zones to grind for. This caused players to not only get bored, but also mad cause by paying Robux, you can access the next update, which was kinda unfair. But the biggest problem was broken promises. After months of hype, Preston abandoned the game after 4 updates, mainly because of how hard it was to make something this perfect. You can't make promises you can't deliver on. With the fall of Petsim 1 and 2, it's time for Preston to retire the Petsim brand. Despite finding instant success, Preston made a few blunders, causing Petsim to vanish. So at this stage, most devs would throw in the towel and peacefully retire- So, what was that about me retiring? 
rather than fully killing the franchise, Preston adapted and learned from his mistakes. For many months, he carefully crafted a new game, Pet Sim X, a combination of Pet Sim 1 and 2, but with way more zones and pets during release. And unlike last time, Preston had all the ideas ready to go. But to actually turn them into updates, the team had an interesting strategy. Rather than stressing on making each world perfect, they made each zone smaller, which allowed them to make more of them in total. When it comes to Roblox games, players don't expect perfection. They just want to have plain fun. Following the successful release, every week he added better and better pets, each getting more difficult to grind for. Oh, and not to mention the occasional easter eggs which always got players talking. Cheers to the start of an incredible journey! But in the midst of all this, there's still one question that hasn't been answered. Instead of wasting time on a whole new game, why not simply change the old one? Well, here's a hint. By making a new game, he had a reason to build more hype, which means more money. I mean, it makes sense, considering these new game passes make it very unfair for poor players. So now the question is, what happens when a money-hungry owner has a growing Roblox game? Introducing Pet Sim X NFTs. Time to get the game deleted, I guess. Okay, to fully understand this issue, we need to go back to the reasons why games never die. A big reason being a safe environment. Sure, pet sim looks cute on the outside. You hatch pets, upgrade pets, and use them to get rich. But if you look into it, the game sort of promotes gambling. Imagine spending millions of Robux for a slim chance of getting an OP pet. Only to be disappointed. This drained thousands of dollars from kids. Out of rage, they did some digging and learned about Preston's history of games. Why should I spend my time and money on a game that'll likely be abandoned? Sure, games like Blocks Fruits and Murder Mystery have gone months without updates and players still love them. But that's because those games have no end goal, making them last forever. But in Pet Sim, once you grind all the way to the final zone, What's there left to do? But surely, none of this matters as long as he keeps updates coming. Right? Ignoring all the drama, he continued to add stronger pets and better worlds. Who could have guessed? But most importantly, a 10,000 Robux game pass allowing you to equip infinite pets instead of the usual 8. Which may seem good, but the problem is, the ability expires in 72 hours. Nice one, Preston. But after this, things took a sharp left turn. The game completely slowed down on updates. This was a massive problem considering how repetitive and formulaic the gameplay was. Without new worlds, most players had time to reach the final zone and completely stop playing. Following a sharp decline in players, Preston returned with a few interesting updates here and there. But this was only short-lived. Which begs the question, at the height of it all, why is he now abandoning his game? Well, for one, the more money he makes, the more comfortable he gets, which means he wouldn't grind as much. Cause if you compare him to other legends, there's a big difference. For example, Rip Indra grew the largest Roblox game by helping players, putting his heart into updates, and making the most insane experience for content creators, regardless of how big his game gets. But on the flip side, Preston makes a cash grab update once a month and dips. Instead of making the best experience for others, he's focused on making the best money for himself. So it's much harder to be truly passionate, causing him to give up after some time. And even doing selfish things, like striking games inspired by him. 
But what if I told you those aren't even the biggest reasons for the game's decline. You see, Preston's initial idea was good, but it's basically the same process a billion trillion times. Once your brain finds a pattern in something, you're inevitably gonna be less interested. The main idea sets an expectation for successful simulators, a never-ending cycle of the same mundane task. But since Preston started this whole trend, it's time for him to end it. And if you don't know what I mean... Welcome to PetSim 99. Unlike his last free games, almost every world has a custom minigame that gives you something to do. And although the game does have gambling, the devs made up for it in an interesting way. Instead of spending thousands of Robux on game passes, you can trade pets for diamonds, which you can then use for special power-ups, like equipping more pets and more pet damage. Plus, once you're at the final zone, you still have all these extra side quests, which players actually turned into a fun competition. With more community bond, Preston was motivated to pour his heart into updates and make them spectacular. So, despite his history, we should all give him another chance to make something great, as long as he continues to learn and adapt. But if we look at the big picture, the fall of these different Roblox games have one thing in common. Since both devs were so focused on money and growth, they completely neglected the well-being and safety of players. At the end of the day, it's cool to get rich, but it's even cooler to do that by putting love, time, and care into your work and community. And speaking of that, I truly love making these kinds of videos, so if you want to see more, let's get 50k likes and hit subscribe while you're at it. But for now, that's a wrap.